because it's time for headphone highlights. Hallelujah, we are actually going to continue our IEM category of headphones. I know we've had lots of departures, um, but we finally get to get back to it. Um, let's have a look at what, what I have for us today. We have another tin hi-fi men. Hi-fi men. I swear every time. We have another tin hi-fi IEM. These are called the T-Hi-Fi P1s. They're a bit of a different shape than our previous uh, tin hi-fis. They're a little bit more compl eh, not complicated, but they have a more unique shape, not just a cylinder. And but they still got um, some nice chrome features going on there. And uh, on the connectors for the cables, you still have some colors to indicate your left and right channels, which is very nice. And the cable is okay. It's an okay cable. If we're being perfectly honest, it's a downgrade uh, from the, uh, the T3s. The T3s have one of the most amazing cables I've ever seen. Um, not even on an IM, but just in general for, for a headphone. Um, but this cable's okay. I like the color. Um, just a nice basic copper weave. Um, but it's a very loose weave. You take a look at this here. You can see how it's a little like, it almost looks like it's falling apart. It's not, it's not falling apart. It just has this looseness to it. Um, it's a strange aesthetic choice to go with, but it's fine. It's functional and it's a nice, you know, a nice basic copper cable. I can't really complain. Um, unlike the uh, T2s and the T3s though, this cable does have some rubbering to reinforce the kind of curvature that goes around the back of your ear. So it is a little bit more supported for that purpose to actually go around the back of your ear to get into the canal. So you, you are intended for sure to wear these like so, which when we talked about the T2s and 3s, we weren't really sure. Um, it was my speculation that's how they wanted us to wear them. But there is no specu speculating here. That is the intended way to wear these. They, uh, I believe, have the same termination. Um, the name of the termination. I'm not prepared, of course, to tell you what it is. Uh, it's the typical, was it like the MMXC or something uh, universal connector? But it's it's nice, it's detachable, and that's what matters. Um, so yeah, the P1s. Um, the P in P1 stands for planar. And that's what's particularly interesting about these, is yes, these are planar magnetic IEMs. That's becoming a bit more common lately, but at the time when these came out, um, that was fairly uncommon. So they're still, I would say, pretty unique in that, in that regard. Planar magnetic IEMs. Very interesting. Um, as such, they share typical benefits with planars. Um, <laughs> so we, uh, as we discussed before, there's not really much to talk about in terms of comfort when it comes to IEMs. Either you like them or you don't. So we're going to kind of skip over that and get right into sound because these do have a planar sound for sure. They're very fast. They're very speedy and snappy. And um, that's fairly unusual in my experience with IEMs. That's very that's fairly unusual. Um, on top of that speediness and that uh, almost metallic -y clen uh, cl um, metallically Oh my gosh, my tongue is just tied all over the place. Metallic cleanliness to the sound. Um, it's very neutral. Uh, another thing that's fairly unusual about IAMs. These are quite neutral. Um, more neutral than I remember, I remember them being. So they're not, nothing's really elevated. Uh, you don't have big thwompy punch bass with this, but you do have low end and it's accurate low end. So it's uh, non-intrusive. It's not bloating out into your mid-range or your, 
what have you. You don't get a tremendous amount of sub base, but uh, your general base range and a little bit of mid base is is present here. It's very fast base. Uh, it doesn't linger. Your mid range is very very clear. Your focal clarity is very very clear. Um, does it excel in the mid range over the high end? I almost want to say that it does. Um, the treble on the high end is very, very clean. It's very sharp. Um, I don't mean in a sibilance sort of way. I mean, it's very, just very pinpoint, almost you know, very accurate, very uh, fast and um, bright. It's a very bright high end. So you're getting lots of detail. Um, but it's not emphasizing the detail in the high end. So you're not having a ridiculously, you know, uh, kind of, for lack of, you're right, here I go with my weird analogies, like this, this, you don't have a really high pitch bippity bop kind of detail. <laughs> yep, um, that's what we're gonna go with. Uh, instead, you have a very uh, flat lined detail because the mid-range and the, and the high-end are almost even. Like, nothing is... They're very, very far away from being V-shaped. They're not V-shaped at all. Um, I would say they probably slope a little bit. Uh, then they even out. Once they get to that kind of high-end, high mid-range and into that treble range, it's almost completely flat. So everything just sounds very, very neutral, very, very natural very, very leveled, almost like it's very, um, very well EQ'd. Um, some might say at first listen, because they're so neutral and they're so natural sounding, some might say at first listen, they sound a little boring. Um, and I could see where you might come from, but I would encourage you to, to try listening to them a little bit more. Dedicate, you know, 20, 30 minutes to listening to them. And you'll see where they're shining, especially if they, if you give them a good amount of power. They're IEM, so they don't require a lot of power, but they benefit from it. Um, I got my THX 789 at about almost 12 o'clock. Um, no, that's a little high. I'd say uh, I would listen to these, you know, they, they would get loud at about 10, 30, 11 o'clock at gain two on my THX. So that's a fair bit of power for an IAM. Um, but they really benefit from having that extra volume, that extra power. It, it, really, it really lets the dynamics do their magic. I'm sorry, not the dynamics, the planars. It really helps the planars do their magic. Um, and yeah, you, you give them that little bit of time, give them that little bit of extra power and volume, and they're really gonna, really gonna shine. Um, they're not boring. Or not. Like I said, you might feel like it sounds a little boring at first, but I encourage you, keep going. They're not boring. Um, they're very pretty darn affordable. I am an idiot and don't have my product page up right now to tell you how much they are, but they're, I'm sure, sub $100. Um, they're, they're really, really great. They're the, are they the only planar IEMs that I have? They might be. They might be the only planar IEMs that I have. If, you know, down our road of our journey of IEMs, one of these is planar, I will let you know, but I think these are the only ones. And they have that extra flip. I almost said flavor. It's not flavor because of how very neutral these are, but they do have that very characteristic planar speediness and sharpness and uh, accuracy. Um, not a whole lot of soundstage as you would probably expect. Uh, but it's not super duper narrow either. Um, it doesn't have the same kind of soundstage that the T2s have. The T2s have more soundstage than the P1s. Um, but it's not just, you know, stereo. It's not just left and right and nothing else. You do have some frontward presence. Um, and because of that, you do have really good imaging. It's not, you know, the most wide all around you 
being able to identify every sound everywhere at any time kind of imaging, but in front of you, you can pinpoint where things are coming from, so it's nice. It's very good. Um, what else? They come in a rather nice case. Uh, I'll show that off. Come on. Trying to open a box with one hand is never going to work. Try this again. Yeah, they come in a very nice box. It's just this nice kind of brown leather. I'm sure it's not real leather. Oh. Hold on. Oh my goodness. It might be. It's very, it's, I've had these for a while, so it's a little hard to tell. But... Nice little box. And inside, it's got this nice kind of suede plushness to it. It's lovely. It's a lovely little box. It might not be the most portable thing. You're not likely going to be carrying this around in your pocket because it's still a little bit of a chonker. But it's nice. It's just nice. It's pleasant. And it goes fairly well with this kind of copper aesthetic. So you get a nice case. You get a decent wire. You get very well built uh, chassis. You know, the, the, they're just straight up metal chromed out housings for these drivers, but they're super solid. Um, and they sound great. They sound awesome. Uh, they uh, maybe aren't as, not maybe, they definitely are not as fun and relaxing as the T2s or even the T3s, uh, but they compromise with having more detail, uh, more neutrality, and more natural of a sound. So that's your trade-off. That's what you want, and you need IMs to do that. This is a pretty tough one to beat, um, at least off of ones I have heard. So thin hi-fi, T, oh my god, Tin Hi-Fi P1s. P is for planar. They're wonderful. They're great. Um, I have no complaints. All right. See, now that we don't have to talk about the uh, comfort with IMs, we can get through these things real, real snappy-like, real quick. So let's, uh, let's get back to it. Back to the game.